Hi everybody, I'm Igor Smirnov. Here is the lesson The Most Common Mistake. As a chess teacher, I analyze my pupils' games regularly. Of course, I analyze games of other players as well. That's why I can tell you that there are a few most common mistakes which most of players make often. So, in this lesson, I'm going to tell you what the most common mistake is. Well, to be honest, I'm not totally sure whether it's the most common mistake or not, but it's definitely one of them. Let me give you a little task. It's Y's turn here. Please think about it for a moment. What would you do here as Y? What is your intuitive impulse? Ok, black is obviously threatening to take the h2 pawn. It looks frightful and most players would take the g4 knight quickly. Usually we even don't think about moves like that too much and make them automatically. In this game, white really played knight takes g4 and after bishop takes g4, the position became equal. At the end, white even lost the game. Now I'll tell you one very important thing, and I want you to remember it very well. To take is a mistake. There is a bit of rhyme here actually, so I hope you remember it better. I don't know why, but most chess players like to take very much. They do it automatically every time it is possible. However, most often to take is a mistake. When you take something by yourself, you usually help your opponent to be more active. An opposite rule is fair as well. When your opponent takes something, he helps you to increase your activity. Let's go back to the starting position of our example. When white takes knight takes g4, white helps black to develop his bishop. So white is not only wasting time, but is helping the opponent. Ok, now we have decided white should do something else here. If you start thinking about it, you will easily find other options. First, white can keep the tension playing bishop f4. Now if black takes an e5, knight takes e5, it helps white to activate his bishop. Bishop takes. By the way, it's important to note that the black's bishop is still on the c8. Thus, this variation is much better for white than an immediate capture on g4. Secondly, white has the counter taking move knight f3, protecting the h2 pawn and taking the queen. Again, white is avoiding an exchange and is keeping the tension. After queen h5, which is forced and bishop f4, white has a huge advantage. For example, if black does something simple like bishop e6 or anything else, then after h3, knight f6 and knight e5, white is just winning because the queen is trapped. If black goes to the h4, white will go bishop g5. If black goes on the f5, white can respond g4. This example is very instructive. If white takes, the position becomes equal. If white doesn't take, he is nearly winning. Here is another example. And it's certainly a wise turn. Ok, what should white do here? I hope it's simple for you now. The main thing is that white should not take. If white makes this mistake, rook takes d8, and then after rook takes d8, the position is equal and black has no problems at all. Thus white should keep the tension and allow black to take. That's why he played rook d2. It's quite demonstrative that white got a winning position just after the next few moves. Black took, white took with a queen, now white is controlling the open file, c4, 
f4, then queen takes d4, put in the queen on the very active square, and then after rook c8 and g4, white has a decisive positional advantage because of his strong attack on the king side and in the center. He can push either f5 or e5, and black has no real counterplay. White won this game pretty soon. Ok, let's look at more difficult example. It is white's turn here. And here is definitely time for an exchange, isn't it? It seems like white can't avoid the exchange. However, we shouldn't forget that to take is a mistake. So even if you are going to trade the knights, it's better to play f3 than to take by yourself with knight takes e4. Secondly, if you think deeper about the position, you will realize that black really wants to exchange his e4 knight. This knight has no other options and no available squares to go to. Therefore, white may try to trap the knight, and white needs to prevent an, ex an eventual exchange first. This is how we can come to the move knight b1. Though it looks strange, it threatens f3, capturing the knight. For example, in the line rook c8 or something else, then white can go f3, and after knight g5, which is forced, white will win the game after h4. So, after knight b1, black is forced to defend. Probably he should play knight d7. Then white will certainly play f3, knight f6, and now white can bring his knight back into the game, knight c3. White actually plays the knight on the battle square, and here white has a stable positional advantage. By the way, in the game, white simply played f3. And then after an exchange of the knights, knight takes d2 and queen takes d2, and the position remains approximately equal. You can see again how powerful the idea of avoiding exchanges can be. Finally, I'd like to show you one game where the topic of this lesson was the bottom line for the whole game. c4, e6, knight f3, d5, e3, d4, and these moves are not so interesting for us at the moment, e3. Ok, starting from this position, there will be a possibility for an exchange always. Let's see how both players will deal with that. And by the way, the, the last black's move, knight c6, is definitely a logical choice, since we're trying to keep the tension. E takes d4, white took the pawn, which helps black to activate his knight. This is why we shouldn't take, usually. Bishop b2, alright. Now white is trying to force black to take an f3, which will help white to activate his queen. Bishop c5, black is still keeping the tension. Ok, what should white do here? I'm pretty sure that a lot of players would simply take on d4. However, to take is a mistake. If you understand this well enough, you will always look for something else instead of an exchange. This is how white found the best move b4, increasing the tension. Now black has the same problem. It seems like he has to take on f3 finally. Although black played queen f6, he is increasing the tension, which is definitely the right idea. So right now, if white takes the bishop on c5, black will take an f3 first, and after that, capturing the bishop b2. And this is the black's tactical idea. Ok, here white gave up and played knight takes d4. Then after a bishop takes, and exchange of the bishops, black got a stable positional advantage because of white's weaknesses and the active black queen. Black realized his advantage quite easily and won the game in the end. 
Okay, let's go back to the last critical position before an exchange. Is there any way for white to continue keeping the tension? White's main problem is the weakness of his b2 bishop. Black is threatening to take it as we know. So it's enough for white just to protect the bishop and to play bishop c3. Now black has to take on f3, knight takes, queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes. The black's pawn g zone is hanging, so bishop f8 is the only move. And in the final position white is very active. He can use the open g file, playing rook g1. He can play d4 to create a strong center, so everything is good. It's quite pleasant to play such a position practically. You can see that the simple rule to take as a mistake has the great value. By the way, it's important to note that in the last example black won against a strong grandmaster just using this advice. So I recommend you to do the same. And I must make a little note at the end. Of course it don't mean that you should never take. Chess is a concrete game. If you see that you can take and get some advantage, then you certainly should do it. However, in most of standard situations, you should remember and follow the rule to take is a mistake. If you remember this advice and follow it in your games, you will play more interesting games with much better results.